Uh, my name is Gene Gilman. I'm the laboratory director at Enthalpy Analytical. We're an independent testing laboratory located in Durham, North Carolina. And we have several core businesses, one of which is tobacco testing, which includes testing of e-cigarettes and e-liquids. What, what I wanted to get out, get out to the attendees was that e-cigarettes are very variable. The devices on the market are very different and that just because you have a device that says it contains two milligrams of nicotine or 24 milligrams of nicotine, that's not actually what the device might yield. Um, we commissioned a, a market survey of e-liquids and what we did is we obtained 18 different uh, e-liquids from 12 different vendors um, on the U.S. market. Um, all of those products were labeled to contain nicotine from around six milligrams per mil up to around 36 milligrams per mil. We took those samples into our laboratory uh, and we analyzed each one of them for actual nicotine content. Uh, and we found that um, in the samples tested about, uh, if I remember my data, I think 50% um, of the samples were outside plus or minus 20%. Some of the samples were off by as much as 50% from the labeled amount. Those were actually labeled low, but some of the samples were 40% high in nicotine. As we moved toward the higher uh, range of nicotine content, the accuracy got a little bit better but still, the vast majority of the products were outside of um, you know, what would be considered a normal range for pharmaceutical products. Absolutely. Um, we've been looking at e-cigarettes for about, um, seriously, for about a year. And what we started doing was actually buying uh, pre-filled devices um, at the local store in Durham. And we broke them open, we extracted the e-liquid out of them, and on the, um, on the devices it said contains X amount of nicotine. And we found in most cases they were off, um, and they were usually off by 40% or more from what they said they contained. I don't know if it's the sourcing of the nicotine because I think in nicotine, whether or not it's 100% pure nicotine or 95% pure nicotine, that's a relatively small uh, uh, error. What I think is happening is that the people that are making the e-liquids um, are not getting their products tested. And so they, they mix the batch of, uh, of juice up. They assume that, that it's right because they don't have any way to know that it's not right. And they label it what they think it is and they put it on the market. Absolutely any e-liquid manufacturer can send samples to us. And what we do, you have to understand, we can't analyze just one sample at a time. So we run samples about twice a month, and if the samples show up you know, before the 15th or, or around the 30th, we'll run them in batches and we'll send the uh, manufacturers uh, an email report which just lists the amount of nicotine in their liquids, we'll send them a, a simple chromatogram that shows them what their, what their samples look like, um, and it's a relatively inexpensive assay to run. We certainly can do that, um, and we do that for a large number of manufacturers already. We look at, at uh, TSNAs in liquids, we look at uh, volatile organic compounds, we look at aldehydes, we look at um, like diacetyl, we look at that. Um, we look for um, uh, DEG, diethylene glycol, we look for that in liquids. Those are more extensive tests that we usually need to schedule in advance, um, and those tests can get, they can get expensive, so we encourage people to actually test either their pure nicotine their flavor solutions or their working level uh, solutions so they can minimize the amount of, of testing. Testing impurities in finished products is it's, it's not economically feasible for most vendors. But if you test one batch of nicotine and a couple batch of flavors, that really will cover you for quite a while. Well, if they're concerned about nicotine level, which I think is personally the most important thing, mm -hmm. you know, vendors are actually selling a bottle and they're putting a nicotine amount on it. They say it's, this is 36 milligrams of nicotine. And I think they, they need to be sure of what they're selling to the consumer. That test is actually very inexpensive. Um, if we can get enough samples, it only works out to be about $50 a sample. Wow. Uh, so it's, it's, it's very inexpensive. Um, and I think it's important to do that test from a product stewardship program and also to make sure that you're not selling a product that is, you know, mis, mis, um, mixed together. You know, in, you, in fact, instead of being 36, it's actually 360. I don't, I've never seen that, but, you know, mistakes happen. In our laboratory, we make mistakes all the time where we make a standard at 10 milligrams and it's actually 100. So, you know, those kinds of things happen. And I think that if people just go through the effort to test their products, that won't happen.
What we provide is we'll, we'll provide you a, uh, an Excel sheet that just lists the, you know, the sample name and then the, the concentration. We also get a, you a chromatogram. And the chromatogram has the, uh, the sample ID on it. It has the, the chromatography that shows you the picture of the nicotine peak. And then below that, it will have um, the concentration in milligrams per mil. And it will also have our logo on it. Easiest way is to go to enthalpy.com. That's E-N-T-H-A-L-P-Y. Um, or they can contact me um, through uh, eSigs at enthalpy.com. Great. Well, last question is kind of a personal one. How do you feel about a TMA so far? I assume this is the first one you've attended. This is the first one that I've, I've been to. It's unlike any conference I've ever been to. Um, they have people from the public health community. They have tobacco people. They have the government regulators. Um, it's been a really good experience because you're getting exposed to a lot of different uh, points of view at the same time. Typically, I usually go to like a science conference that's very, you know, mass spec or chemistry oriented, or I go to a tobacco conference, and there's not a whole lot of, of in between, but this, this really is. Uh, Gene Gillen, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. All right, thank you.